tarde con su Dios. Que dos cielos estén muy felices. My name is Paula Garcia, and I'm executive director of the New Mexico Aseca Association. And we are here to call for a full and fair farm bill, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're here to ask Congress for food justice for all, yeah. right? Yeah. Today, people from all over New Mexico have gathered to celebrate the Global Day of Action for Food Sovereignty, the day that celebrates our food traditions. It celebrates our right to grow our own food with our land, water, and seeds. It's also World Food Day declared by the United Nations. We are here to affirm our sacred right to grow our own food, to grow our own food in our land and water. We're also here to call on Congress to pass a full and fair farm bill. We are so delighted that you could be here and we are grateful for everyone's support. And I would like to ask Serafina Lombardi to do a roll call so that we know all the organizations that are here present to support our, our, uh, our event today. <coughs> When I call your organization's name, please call Presente in response. Cosecha del Norte Co-op. Presente. American Friends Service Committee. Presente. Somos un Pueblo Unido. Presente. The Santa Fe Farmers Market and the Santa Fe Farmers Market Institute. Presente. Las Acequias de Chupadero. Presente. Bioregional Strategies. Presente. Wild Watershed. Acequia de El Rincón. Presente. Nuestra Señora de San Fernando y Santiago Truchas Land Grant. Presente. Agricultura Network. Presente. Taos County Economic Development Council. Presente. The Rural Coalition and the National Latino Farmers and Ranchers Organization. Presente. Catrisco Land Grant. Presente. La Tierra Montessori Charter School. Presente. <laughs> New Mexico Cattle Growers Association. Presente. <laughs> Native American Food Sovereignty Alliance. Presente. Molina de la Isla Co-op. Presente. New Mexico Acequia Commission. Presente. Northern New Mexico Stockman's Association. Presente. I hope we got you all. Thank you for being here. Oh, New Mexico Acequia Association. Que viva la Acequia. Nuestros ranchos. Que viva. que viva la comida. Que viva. que viva la soberanía alimental. Que viva, que viva el farm bill. Que viva. Muchísimas gracias. So we're here. Thank you. Thank you for answering our call to action. This is a very important day for our communities as we come to celebrate World Food Day, the Global Day of Action for Food Sovereignty. And I'd like to recognize the people who will be speaking today representing the key organizations that helped uh, uh, envision this event and this call to action. We are going to have uh, New Mexico Seca Association represented. New Mexico Seca Association. Thank you. We're going to have American Friends Service Committee. Cows County Economic Development Corporation. Traditional Native American Farmers Association. And Northern New Mexico Stockman's Association. Yeah. We, are, we are part of a national movement that has gained very important victories in the Farm Bill in the last two or three cycles of the Farm Bill, which has historically been authorized every five years in a bipartisan manner, in a manner that has met the needs of, of agriculture on the larger scale. But we have also made important reforms to support the new generation of farmers to support beginning farmers, to support the farmers market promotion program. And very importantly, it's, it's also included a promise 
by USDA and our government that groups like ours, groups that were historically underserved, whether they be Native American, Hispanic, Latino, or Asian, and all, and all these groups and women that had been underserved in the past will not be underserved by USDA. And we have the, the 2501 program that's an important part of the Farm Bill. We're advocating that these and other innovative programs that expanded the opportunity in the Farm Bill, that expanded equity in the Farm Bill for all farmers, not just the larger scale farmers, because that's the future of agriculture in New Mexico, and it's the future of agriculture for America. <laughs> Our agriculture here is deeply rooted in the past with our, our Native American indigenous traditions going back millennia. And we're here to celebrate those things. We came together to share atole. And atole is a sacred food. It's the food that we, that we uh, uh, share with our, our babies. It's the, the food that moms eat shortly after giving birth to our babies. This is the food that we use to bring back our, our, our health if we're not feeling well. And this is the food that we eat after a hard day's work or to get ready for a hard day's work. It's very symbolic for us. And atole, I want to thank uh, Pilar Trujillo and Rincón Farm for providing the atole. Thank you. For us, food is sacred. Food is something that we celebrate in all our sacred times and our baptisms and weddings and our funerals. And when we come together to do hard work, if we're cleaning acequias or we're working a field as cardando, that's, this is another day of work. And this is part of our work. When we stand together, we come together and call for justice. And in this case, we're calling for food justice in New Mexico for all of our farmers and ranchers, right? At this point, we have no farm bill in, in this country. The farm bill expired on October 1st. And the farm bill includes all the, the, the commodity programs we're familiar with that help the large-scale farmers. We've been able to make some historic reforms in the last few years for other kinds of farmers like us who are historically excluded in the farm bill. We want to keep those gains. One of the very important organizations I want to mention that, that helped inspire this event is Rural Coalition. Rural Coalition, the National Latino Farmers and Ranchers, um, have helped to organize a letter that was sent to Congress signed by over 400 organizations around the country calling on Congress for a full and fair farm bill. A full and fair farm bill that includes these, um, <coughs> these programs that are supporting small and beginning farmers, uh, women farmers, minority farmers, that also supports the new generation of farmers with organic certification and diversifying agriculture in this country. That's the farm bill that we want. We also want to keep uh, uh, food and nutrition programs in the farm bill. We we're resisting efforts to remove SNAP from the farm bill because we're standing in solidarity. New Mexico has one of the highest rates of food insecurity in the country, actually the highest food rate of food insecurity, highest rate of childhood hunger. The wrong direction for New Mexico is to leave SNAP out of the Farm Bill. We want to keep the Farm Bill whole. We're calling for a full and fair Farm Bill, right? Yeah. So how does the Farm Bill affect us immediately? It'll affect the farmers and ranchers waiting for disaster assistance because of the drought and the flooding that we've had. And the never before have we had such an important need for disaster assistance from the Farm Service Agency. It affects the farmer and rancher who's waiting for an application to be processed for cost share, for conservation improvements on their farm, for hoop houses. Many of the vendors who are sell here at the farmer's market are doing year-round production now in these hoop houses. Um, it also, it also affects vendors who might not have access to the SNAP and WIC benefits uh, that a lot of the customers the farmers market are bringing to the market. So a big part of our livelihood now um, and some of the income for our farmers and ranchers comes from those benefits. So we have immediate impacts. It affects our families. It affects our communities beyond agriculture. It affects everybody who cares about food. It affects everybody who cares about equity and food justice in New Mexico. And we're so... Um, we're so happy to see the, the support today, and at that, with this, I would like to ask our next speaker to come forward, and I'm going to ask uh, Clayton Brockupe to uh, read the uh, food sovereignty statement. Let's hear it for Clayton! Good morning, everybody, uh, and thank you for the uh, atole this morning. It, it really uh, made my day. Um, 
Um, my name is Clayton Brockway, and uh, I'm representing two different organizations today. One is uh, Native American Food Sovereignty Alliance. It's a national organization, and I'm also a program director for the Traditional Native American Farmers Association, and it's uh, a little more regional. Uh, we have uh, members in both uh, New Mexico and Arizona. Um, I'm going to read a, a statement that came out of a meeting earlier this month that was held up in uh, the um, Midwest uh, of the United States. <clears throat> it's a Native American Food Sovereignty Alliance call to action. Restoring Native food systems in immediate and fundamental need for continued survival and physical and spiritual well-being of Native peoples and our Mother Earth now and into the future. The cost of doing nothing and the potential benefits of action are massive. <clears throat> the Native American Food Sovereignty Alliance is dedicated to restoring the indigenous food systems that support indigenous self-determination, wellness, culture, values, communities, economies, languages, and families, and rebuild relationships with land, water, plants, and animals that sustain us. Um, NAF NAFSA brings people together, community, rural, and remote urban organizations, tribal governments together, and sh uh, share and promote and support best practices and policies that enhance dynamic native food systems that promote holistic wellness, sustainable economic development, education, reestablish trade routes, stewardship of land and water resources, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring and multi-generational empowerment. NAFSA works to pull the farmers, wild crafters, fishers, hunters, ranchers, and eaters of the <clears throat> at the center of decision making on policies, strategies, and natural resource management. We commit to take collective individual action to address food sovereignty and to build the necessary understanding and awareness among our peoples, nations, leaders, and policymakers, as well as, as our youth and coming generations to make a continuing reality. Thank you. Thank you, Clayton. Let's hear it for Clayton. He taught many of us about seed saving. He's a seeds man. I want to give a special uh, recognition to everyone who brought food to share for today's table. Uh, can we have a round of applause for our farmers who shared food today? We have beautiful chile and our maiz azul, manzanas, and we also have vegetables and zanorias and beautiful things. So we have the whole array of healthy food. This is what healthy food in New Mexico looks like. And we want everyone to have access to this kind of food, food that's grown in our own soil, food that's fresh, a food that is delicious. Yeah. Yeah. We're all about delicious, right? <laughs> Like I said, we have a very, uh, uh, we're part of an important national movement for food justice and um, correcting historic injustices in the Farm Bill. And Rural Coalition is represented today. Uh, Northern New Mexico Stockman Association member and leader uh, Dave Sanchez is going to speak to us now uh, on behalf of his organization, but also on behalf of Rural Coalition. So let's hear it for Dave Sanchez. Yeah. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dave Sanchez. I'm a rancher from northern New Mexico. I was raised in New Mexico. And today I'm the spokesman for two national organizations, uh, Rural Coalition and the National uh, Latino Farmers and Ranchers Trade Association. And bear with me, they gave me a lengthy message. <laughs> uh, these two organizations, as Paula has mentioned, have been advocates for all of us in Washington in getting a full and fair farm bill passed, and we really need to give them a round of applause. <laughs> also with us uh, as a member of uh, Rural Coalition and National uh, uh, Latinos Farmers and Ranchers is Jaime Chavez. And uh, Jaime has worked tirelessly uh, going to D.C. with me and others to work on the Farm Bill, to work with our congressional folks, and he has really done a great job, so I'd like to recognize Jaime. If you don't know Jaime, he's right here. <laughs> I 
also want to bring to your attention uh, Northern New Mexico Stockman's Association. Uh, the association is the voice for approximately 20,000 farmers and ranchers in Northern New Mexico and Southern Colorado. And they do a great job representing uh, farmers and ranchers issues, uh, primarily on federal land issues. As we all know, most of our waters that come down to Las our Ezequias are born on federal lands. Uh, many of our uh, Hispanic and Native Americans are grazing permittees on federal lands, uh, Forest Service and uh, BLM. So uh, the Stockmans uh, have done a great job for us all along with Las Ezequias and, uh, and again, uh, Paula, thank you for doing a bang up job today. So with that, bear with me folks. Uh, uh, in your packets is a formal press release from the two national organizations and, and I encourage all of you to get a copy of it. The Rural Coalition uh, and the National Latino Farmers and Ranchers Trade Association in partnership with over 400 organizations across the country are calling for immediate action on our nation's most pressing farm and food policy. We need a farm bill passed, folks. We can't wait any longer. We need a farm bill for now and for the future. As Paula has indicated, we need a full and fair farm bill passed. Over the, over the last two years, organizations working throughout the country and across sectors from grassroots to national have worked together to influence the broken farm bill reauthorization process. We've got a problem, folks. If we can't get a farm bill passed every five years, we're all in jeopardy. Food safety is in jeopardy. Our organizations have joined with more than 400 groups to support attached statement calling for a full and fair farm bill that restores funding to our country's nutrition programs, supports a next generation of our nation's farmers and ranchers. We're talking about the youth here, folks. We cannot lose our kids. We need to have our kids engaged in farming and ranching to support the nine billion people in this nation that need food. And, uh, on behalf of our board and members, we extend gratitude to our member groups and allies here, and especially the New Mexico Secures uh, Association, the Taos County Economic Development Center, the pretty ladies over here, and the Northern New Mexico Stockman's Association, all of who have done an extraordinary coordination working uh, New Mexico as one of the most unified and politically influential states in protecting and advancing equity in our national food and farm policy. Uh, we had uh, over 75 groups from New Mexico, that's how strong we are, 75 groups that signed on to the farm bill to pass the farm bill and we have we've had our congressional folks our brand new member to the Agriculture Committee, Michelle Lujan Grisham, that is a real champion for us folks. So when you run in to Michelle, give her a round of applause. <laughs> today our nation is without a farm bill. That's why we're here today. And, and all the concern over the federal government shutdown and the looming crisis. Yes, folks, we are in a crisis over raising the national debt limit. The press and the public have failed to notice that the last extension of the Farm Bill also expired on September 30th, 2013. Ranchers, ranchers in South Dakota who lost historic herds in a recent snowstorm have no disaster assistance without USDA market data. The prices farmers and ranchers pay and receive in the marketplace at harvest are based only on guesses today because those offices are shut down and we can't access that data. Farm agency offices across the nation are closed and the USDA websites, as I stated earlier, are not available and have gone dark on us. 
And if something is not done immediately to end the shutdown of our government as of November 1st, families, families across this whole nation will also be without benefits of the supplement, supplemental nutrition assistance programs, as we all know as SNAP, long now as uh, food stamps. We need those set SNAP programs healthy and activated for our people, folks. The Farm Bill extension that just ended, constructed behind closed doors on New Year's Eve as part of the so-called sequester bill, omitted funding for 37, 37 folks, innovative programs for family size and minority farmers that we all labored hard to secure in the 2000 Farm Bill, including the very important 2501 outreach and assistant program for socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers. We need that 2501, folks. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I'm glad I have some support out there. <laughs> Programs are needed by the ranchers in our state to protect and restore forest health. As we uh, have witnessed uh, all of the uh, forest fires, the uh, catastrophic problems uh, with our forests, the fires, the canopies, we need those programs to work on those issues and restore the health. Without a farm bill, the future of these programs and their ability to help uh, vulnerable rural farm and, uh, farm and farm working families is graved out. Our our colleagues will share more information on the immediate impacts of the government shutdown on community-based organizations who have federal agreements to do outreach, training, and technical assistance to begin to beginning and undeserved farmers. Here and around the nation, several hundred organizations hold current reimbursement agreements to assist USDA with outreach and education, meaning the government provides its share of the funds only after the organization completes the work. So they're hanging way out there, folks. The shutdown is holding up millions of dollars of funds owed to small businesses and non profit community-based organizations for work they have already done, leaving them with funds for salaries, rent, utilities, and other expenses. And in small communities here and everywhere, employees who are not receiving salaries cannot buy groceries or gas or pay rent, hurting the businesses in those communities. We got to get the economy churning, folks. We need this farm bill. We need to get rolling. Let's get rolling. Meanwhile, pending House legislation threatens to end the Farm Bill as we know it, discontinuing the Farm Bill as permanent law. We cannot have that. We've got to send a very clear message to our congressional folks who represent us that we have to have a permanent uh, Farm Bill. It can't be taken out of the law. And having the nutrition title expire two years before the rest of the Farm Bill. We strongly oppose this effort to split the political alliance between the country and the city that has sustained our national food and farm policy for decades. We further reject the devastating cuts. Listen to this, folks. $40 billion to the SNAP program. We cannot afford that. No, 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 no cuts. No cuts. Uh, current house bill at the time that families cannot find jobs, they need to meet their basic needs. We cannot afford a $40 billion cut to the SNAP program. Without completion of the farm bill, we also lose important new policy provisions such as the amended uh, amendments secured by our own Congressman Ben Ray Lujan and the New Mexico Asequias Association that removes barriers to support for infrastructure improvements for a second. That's the life of our communities, folks. If we can't have that water coming into our second and we can't secure the infrastructure, the food on the table will not be here tomorrow. 
We also want to assure final passage of a house provision to require a receipt for service be provided that all those who access USDA uh, services for farms and ranchers. We have many cases in northern New Mexico where uh, minority ranchers have gone to USDA office seeking loans and services in FSA or rural development and have not been provided the services. We will not tolerate that, folks. We need those services for northern New Mexico. Yeah! In short, we support equity, justice, opportunity, and access across all titles of the Farm Bill. We stand with members and allies to demand that Congress complete its work, complete work on a full, fair, and permanent food and farm bill this fall. That is our message today. Congress, get a farm bill passed. We need a full and fair farm bill passed. This bill, the farm bill must include farm, food, and nutrition, conservation, and rural economic development, the agencies that I just spoke of earlier. It must also provide renewed funding for the now stranded but critical subset of programs that assist the most chronically unserved segments of agriculture, that's us, <laughs> and our rural and urban communities those standing with us today. Folks, we need a farm bill. There are a lot of initiatives on, on the table and on the floor. I'll bring up uh, USDA Secretary uh, Vilsack's Strike Force initiative that was designed to help the economy of rural America, rural New Mexico. We totally support Vilsack on his initiative to improve the economy of these rural communities, but we need those agencies in, in USDA to do the outreach, to lend those folks the money, especially our youth that are trying to stay in agriculture, farm and ranch. They need some help from USDA. Thank you, folks. If you have any questions, I'll be around and, and so will Jaime. Let's hear it for our farmers. Let's hear it for our ranchers. Que viva los niños. Que viva la juventud. Que viva el futuro. As Dave mentioned, we are calling for a full and fair farm bill. This has great impacts to our communities. Having a stalled farm bill as it is now is is hurting our communities, it's hurting families. And um, the next speakers are going to tell us about their great work doing rural economic development through food and agriculture in Taos County. And I'd like to introduce Patty Martinson and Terry Badhand. Thank you so much. We bring you greetings from Taos. Um, I'm Patty, and this is Terry. And we have been working on a community food system in Taos, New Mexico, and northern New Mexico for 27 years. The way that we have approached rural economic development, which is a big word, is just to listen to the people in our community, to learn what it is they care about. And what they have consistently said to us is that food, land, water, cultures, and traditions are the heart of the people. And that's what they wanted us to work on. To uphold. In New Mexico, we have determined that so much has been taken from us in New Mexico. Our people, our food, our cultures, and have been sold on a market that doesn't respond to what it is that we actually have done for century after century, which is to feed ourselves, to bring health, to bring peace, to have people from different cultures able to work and live together. The divisiveness that is in our 
federal government institution right now is completely unacceptable. We know better, and they should be able to learn from us. And with all of the minerals, the people, and all those things that have been taken from us in this special land, it's only fair that we ask for and receive reinvestment, put it back, put back the farm bill, and bring those programs back to our people so that we can continue. We have had in the past some assistance from USDA, but it didn't begin until Secretary Vilcek made that very strong statement. There was a grant program called 2501 that's been out there for many years, but I can promise you that none of us ever made it through, no matter how appealing and well done our proposals were, we were largely ignored. The very brief time that outreach and assistance to socially disadvantaged farmers has been available to organizations like ours and to the groups that are here today, it has made a tremendous difference. TCEDC currently has 40 businesses um, that are linked to the land that are farmers that make food. And those families have been able to really take care of themselves. It's always a thrill for us when we see uh, new family members coming in. And we actually have people in the food center now that had a business for the first time, formally, formally recognized. And those original businesses are now being passed on to their children. So there's a history of that kind of entrepreneurship and that, that willingness to work all those hours and so proudly to present the food that comes from the land and the water and the people and the traditions and the cultures. So it's very devastating that I get a notice on my email every day from grants.gov and I can tell you and I can promise you that really since last summer there have been no programs announced on there that benefit in our country, our farmers and ranchers and people who are the entrepreneurs that have made that system whole, our ranchers and our ability to get that healthy local meat on our tables is ser seriously curtailed. That full and fair farm bill that we're asking for is only economic and social justice. And I, I just want to add, you know, that it is really an honor to be here with all of you. You know, um, this brings back memories of, you know, activism days in the past where people have to get together and make a stand. And if anything that I've heard from everybody who's spoken today, you know, the cost of doing nothing is catastrophic. We have to do something. We definitely need a full and fair farm bill. We're watching the impact.